Welcome back to the Oracle Mobile Application Framework YouTube channel. This episode is one of a series on the MAF local database. In this episode, you will learn about JDBC fundamentals. To use the local database effectively, it is essential to know at least the basics of JDBC. This is because there is no data control that binds directly to the database. If you want to fetch data from it or store data in it, you will need to write Java code. You will also have to use Apojo data control to bind data to the UI. JDBC is a very mature API. It was introduced in Java 1.1 and its fundamentals haven't changed since. The API is implemented in the java.sql and javax.sql packages. JDBC drivers are an important part of JDBC. They are client-side adapters that convert requests from Java programs to a protocol that the database engine can understand. The SQLite driver is included in the MAF JVM. You don't need to download, install, or configure it. There are three basic concepts you should know about JDBC. First, the connection. In client-server databases such as Oracle, the connection is made over the network. In the case of MAF, the connection is made by opening the relevant SQLite database file. If the file doesn't exist, the SQLite JDBC driver will create it. The second concept is the statement. It is used to execute simple statements that don't require parameters. And finally, we have the prepared statement. A prepared statement is pre-compiled, which enhances performance. It might contain parameters and can be reused as needed. Statements and prepared statements are created by calling methods on a connection object. Getting a JDBC connection in math is straightforward. There are three main steps. First, prepare. SQLite databases are files. We need to obtain the path to this file using classes provided by MAF. Second is connect. To interact with the database, we need a valid JDBC connection object. We use the path we obtained in step one to do it. Finally, set options. Some of the default behaviors of JDBC connections are not necessarily desirable in your application. I recommend, for example, to turn off auto commit in order to improve performance and make application behavior more predictable. Let's now have a look at a code sample that performs all three steps. If you already used JDBC, establishing a connection to a SQL-like database is a bit different than what you are used to. Fortunately, MAF provides everything you need. The first step is to obtain the name of the directory where the database is located. On iOS, an application is limited to reading and writing files within its own directory, that is, the installed location of the application. The application cannot access another application's files. Android, on the other hand, allows access to shared locations on the file system. My recommendation is to design your application around iOS's limitation to keep it portable. Basically, this means you cannot share SQLite databases between applications. The ADFM Java Utilities class contains several helper methods that facilitate interaction with the file system. In this sample, we use the get directory path root method alongside with the application directory constant defined by math. This will return us the path of the application's home directory. After that, we concatenate it with the name of the database file. We are now ready to open the connection. Parameters for JDBC connections are specified through URLs. In this case, the URL must always start with the JDBC SQLite prefix, followed by the full path to the database file. I recommend you turn off autocommit as a matter of course. You should always manage transactions explicitly, since this improves performance for inserts, among other things. 
As I mentioned in another episode, SQL-like databases can be encrypted. Encrypted databases can be accessed only by providing the password selected at encryption time. At this point, you probably are asking yourself, how can I encrypt the database? The answer is straightforward. Typically, you will encrypt a database only once, right after its creation. You may wish to re-encrypt it later in order to change the password, for example. The ADFM Java Utilities class contains methods to encrypt and permanently decrypt a database. Both require an open connection to work. You cannot decrypt a database without providing the password. Please note that if you connect to an encrypted database with the wrong password and try to encrypt it again, neither the old correct password, the invalid password, nor the new password will unlock the database. All data will be lost. You have the option to use a map-generated database password to encrypt the database. The framework can also manage the password for you. This is accomplished through the Generated Password class, which requires a distinct ID to be used for each password it manages. In addition, the setPassword method will use a seed value to jumpstart the generation. Given what we have seen up to now, how can we establish a connection to an encrypted database? This is very simple, in fact simply pass the credentials to the getConnection method. You can obviously retrieve the correct password using the generated password class. Most of the time, when you execute a query, you expect a result in return. In JDBC, query return values are manipulated through classes implementing the java.sql.resultSet interface. There are three distinct types of result sets. The first one is forward-only. It offers reduced overhead, but is obviously less versatile. The second is crawlable and contains the rows that satisfy the query at either the time the query is executed or as the rows are retrieved. The third type of result set is scrollable and will reflect changes made to the database while the result set remains open. To retrieve values from the current row, you will need to use signed getter methods for each of the columns you are interested in. These methods require you provide either the name, alias or index for the column, the last two being determined by the query. It is recommended you to use indexes for optimal performance. It is possible to update the database directly through a result set if the latter has been configured to do so. I will show you a code sample in a few minutes, but before we get there, I must introduce you to result set cursors. Result set cursors mark the current row in a result set. They are not related to database side cursors. With them, you can navigate result sets in a sequential fashion with methods such as next, previous, first, and last. In addition, before first and after last make it easier for you to insert new records at the beginning or at the end of the set. Result set also allow random access to records. The relative method will move the cursor by the number of rows specified, a negative number will move the cursor backwards. On the other hand, the absolute method will move the cursor to the given row number, if it exists. Let's now have a look at a few code samples. Please note I removed all exception handling from the samples for the sake of simplicity and clarity. In my first sample, I query the database to fill a list of objects. The table I query is called countries. I want to get all records for this table and store them in the country bio objects. You see that this object mimics the database structure. It is meant to be consumed by the user interface of my math application. To get the record, I have to establish a connection, create a JDBC statement and execute it. This gives me a result set. Then, 
I only need to iterate on the result set in order to create the country bo objects and store them in a list called return value. Here is the actual code. First, we create the JDBC connection as we have seen before. I removed the details for the sake of brevity. After that, I use a simple statement in order to retrieve the data. As you can see, the query includes all three columns from the countries table. Then, I iterate on the result set. For each row, I create a new country BO object instance and call the appropriate getters to populate it. Finally, I add the country BO object to the list. Let's not try to insert data in the database. This is a typical example of prepared statement used. As you can see, the prepared statement object exposes typed setters to facilitate manipulation of parameter values. The commit is initiated by calling the appropriate method on the connection. JDBC makes it possible to group non-query statements in batches. In this sample, I create a batch of two insert statements. If some of the commands in the batch didn't run successfully, the JVM will raise a batch update exception. This special exception object contains all the technical details about the issue and facilitates the identification of the statements involved. Finally, this sample shows you how you can use a result set to update the database without the need for an explicit update query. For this to work, your query must be made directly on a table, not on a database view. In addition, the query must not contain joints. In this case, I simply iterate on all rows in order to reduce coffee prices by 50%. Who doesn't love a good deal? You now have learned the basics of JDBC. Let me give you a few additional tips and tricks before this episode ends. Foreign keys are an essential part of SQL databases. SQLite supports them, but the feature is disabled by default. More precisely, the foreign constraints will not be checked unless you activate the feature. To do so, simply execute the pragma foreign underscore keys equal on statement on the database. This should be done every time you open a connection. In order to do this, my recommendation is to create a factory class that will reside in the application controller project or in a shared feature. SQLite uses 64-bit integers for row IDs. If you define a column of type integer primary key, it will become an alias for the row ID. SQLite can reuse values assigned in the past but currently available for the row ID of a new row. If you add the auto-increment keyword to the column type, the row ID chosen for the new row is at least one larger than the largest row ID that has ever before existed in that same table. SQLite cannot guarantee a gapless sequence of values for the row ID, whether auto-increment has been specified or not. If you initialize a new database, you will probably execute a large quantity of insert statements. This will probably take longer than it should, since inserts in a SQLite database execute in their own implicit transaction. Unless you actually need this behavior, you should manage the transaction manually in order to get better performance. SQLite databases are files. When records are deleted, their location in the file is marked as free, but the data is still recoverable. SQLite's secure delete overwrites deleted data with zeros in order to prevent this possibility. It is enabled by executing the pragma secure underscore delete equals on statement. That's it for this episode. As we have seen, there are three fundamental classes in JDBC, connection, statement, and result set. With those three, you can query the database and execute DDL or DML statements. Don't hesitate to reuse the code snippets we studied together. 
I'm Frédéric Desbiens. Thank you for watching and have fun with the Oracle Mobile Application Framework.